Hey, what's going on everyone? So if you have an H3 and own a set of these rear cargo nets, you probably know that they're absolutely terrible. You literally put anything in here and these things will fall off. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. All right, so let's go ahead and install this factory piece. Right here, right here, right here. So it's on, but if you go to wiggle it at all, it falls right off. This is terrible. So if it falls off with no cargo, imagine when you go ahead and put some cargo in it. Here is one D-ring. <laughs> it fell right through. The top one stayed on, but you can't even load stuff in here. Okay, let's push the limit. Let's put this uh, recovery strap in here. <laughs> put this back on. Okay, fine. Let's try something of the correct size, a tire repair kit. So let's go ahead, put it in. Fits perfectly. You gotta wiggle it at all comes right off. So you literally cannot put anything in here without it falling off. I think the biggest thing you could put in here is maybe a screwdriver. Now this problem is in every model year of the H3, including the H3T. For whatever reason, GM never even acknowledged that this was a problem. They never did any type of recall on it or offered any type of replacement. To make matters even worse, when you go to put the seats down and then you go to put them back up again, it's not exactly fun. And look at that, came off. Now this is a really common problem. And what a lot of times people will do is take their H3 nuts out and just throw them in the trash. Or they put them in their garage and years later they forget about it when they go to sell it. And this is pretty evident. Just go on any place that sells cars, whether it be Auto Trader, Craigslist, and take a look at how many of the H3s have cargo nets in them. Now remember, this was a factory option, so in theory, most of them should have it. But in actuality, only about half of them have it. I was actually curious about this myself, so what I ended up doing was going on car gurus and I took a look at 50 H3s. 25 of the H3s did have the cargo nets and 25 did not. So from that alone, you could tell that this is a big problem. However, if you still got your cargo nets, there is finally a fix that you could do. All right, I just came in because it is literally 100 degrees out, so if I'm sweating, please forgive me. All right, so the inherent problem with these cargo nets is these little clips right here. These are things actually responsible for hanging on to the back of the H3 seat. Now, if you take a look right here, you can kind of see how this hooks on. And the problem is that this hook is just not wide enough. If it was a little bit thicker, it would be fine. But since it's too small, it allows it to wiggle up and down, and that's what enables the seat to come off so much. Now obviously to fix this problem, the only thing you have to do is replace these clips. But up until now, no one has made a aftermarket one for purchase. So one of the Hummer owners I know out there that goes by the name Alpha H3T on Instagram and YouTube has actually designed his own custom clips right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. So here's what they look like. Let me go ahead and focus in on these. And these are actually 3D printed, believe it or not. But they look really good for being 3D printed. And honestly, they don't really feel like it. They have a good texture to them. Here's the comparison between the factory ones and the new ones. The new ones are just kind of a smooth one. These have just like a texture to them. But honestly, they look fine to me. So unlike these that are really smooth and skinny, this aftermarket one is a whole lot beefier and will prevent this thing from sliding out at all. So now let's go ahead and install one. All right, so the tools you're gonna need is a pretty simple list, just something to cut it with and a screwdriver. So you're gonna start by wedging your screwdriver between the stretching material and all you're gonna do is put it off to the side. Now you're just gonna go ahead and cut off the factory clip. I'm being a little precise here and cutting it in the middle. You don't have to, you could just take a pair of whatever you got and just cut it on the side. For me, it was a little bit hard to cut it directly in the middle, and you gotta have a tool that fits perfectly in there. So I would just cut these. I just like saving the old H3 parts, just in case if I ever needed them again, but I would just recommend cutting them. But yeah, as you can see here, just go ahead and remove the factory clip. Uh, make sure you don't cut the stretchy material, and you can go ahead and put on the new clip. It takes a little bit of finesse with the screwdriver in order to get it in, but after a minute or so, it should be able to slide through. So here's a comparison between the factory clip and the aftermarket one. As you can see with the aftermarket one, it's already got that cut built right into it, so you don't need to do any cutting or anything like that. And here's the factory one, definitely not as beefy as the aftermarket one. 
and then we can go ahead and take a look at the hook size between the two. The factory hook is just too small and that's what allows it to jostle out that easily compared to the aftermarket one which is a lot bigger. Alright sweet now we are done with this side we got the new clips in as you can see here and sorry it is dark out I did have to stop for a quick sec but let's go ahead and put this one in. Alright once these things are in there these are hard to get out. The other day I actually just tried putting one of these clips in here just to see how strong it would be in here and I couldn't get it out I had to actually use a flathead to get it out so let's go ahead and put these on let's see how easy they are okay they're a little take a little bit to get in got it got it there wow a lot harder to get in there but now time for the ultimate test whoa oh, oh my god this literally makes a world of difference factory clips redesigned clips by alpha h3t Now I could tell that these were going to be good because when I went to go push them in there, they gave me a little bit of resistance and that's good because now these things aren't moving. So now let's go ahead and do the other side. Super easy. It takes like five minutes. All right, time for the second set. All right, now that we got our new clips installed, these things are not coming out at all. And look at that, I'm even kind of stretching this out a little bit just because of how sturdy they are and how much I'm pulling and hugging on them. All right, these things are good to go, but we got one final test. So let's go ahead and start off with the D-rings. One, two, three, four. Nope. Second test, recovery strap. Oh, it's stretching it. It's stretching it all right. But it fits. This thing is solid in here. I'm guessing this won't be a problem. No problem at all. These things are awesome. All right, this was super easy to do. Takes about 15 minutes. So if you still got your cargo nets in the back of your H3 or in your garage, you got to get one of these sets because you can actually use that space in the back of your H3 now. A huge props to Alpha H3T for coming up with this solution and also making it available to purchase if you want to fix it yourself. Now, definitely give this guy a follow on Instagram. He's actually looking into making more H3 products like a dual battery tray so you can run a dual battery setup. He's also looking at doing a H3T rear bumper and also some custom hubcaps for black rhino wheels. It's really awesome to see other homer owners out there making parts for our trucks because there's not that many companies that want to support the H3. So please do support the little guys out there that are making products for our trucks. A lot of them do not do this full time. This is just something that they do in their spare time because no one else wants to do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry I've been gone for like a month. I do want to start trying to upload videos regularly. It's just kind of hard with my work schedule and whatnot. I literally have like over a hundred videos that I want to do on the H3. So they'll come. This is definitely not going to be one of those channels that only posts like three videos and never posts again. Now I'm also thinking about doing some other types of videos. I don't want to call them vlogs, but more it's just me kind of recording stuff that I'm doing in my truck. This is things that I really don't want to spend five to ten hours making a video on. Because it's so niche, I would rather put that time into videos that you guys have been asking about for a while. So that'll allow me to film content on a more regular basis. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you later.